Chairman's Advisors provides information and guidance to international companies looking to successfully navigate entry into Iran's oil and gas markets. I am joined by the Chief Executive Officer of the company, Madi Kazemzadeh. Hello, Madi. Hi, Charlotte. Thank Thanks you for joining us today. Now, Afras is a young company, only three years old. So tell us a bit about your journey. Absolutely. Um, so we are three years old. I founded the company in 2013 um, and uh, we are basically a bunch of uh, technical and commercial guys with first-hand experience working in Iran and we saw things started to change in 2013, end of 2013, uh, between Iran and the West and we said this is an opportunity for us to get out there and do something different and we set out to introduce Iranian opportunities um, to oil and gas companies around the world, oil and gas companies and oil and gas investors. Now, two and a half years down the line, uh, we've come a long way. We now have a uh, characterization of some 51 fields, uh, onshore and offshore, which uh, we uh, international companies subscribe to, to get to know more about what's going on in the country. And uh, we are actively advising a number of investors and oil and gas companies on how they can enter the market. A lot is about to change in Iran. There's obviously a lot of talk around uh, sanctions being lifted. Mm -hmm. And in fact, a nuclear agreement between Iran and six other nations uh, was reached earlier this year. So now what? What's next in terms of this, uh, mm. you know, the sanctions being lifted? Absolutely. So um, the uh, but Iranians have um, a different vision on this with, uh, uh, with some, some of the other countries involved in the negotiations. As far as Iranians are concerned, they have said that they are going to do whatever is required of them to do by the end of this year. Uh, at that point, uh, IAEA, which is the International Atomic Agency, will verify that Iranians have in fact done what they had promised to do, and then the sanctions are lifted. So now that may be a month earlier, a month later, but we expect that these sanctions uh, related to nuclear uh, uh, nuclear issues. European, United Nations uh, ones will be lifted end of this year, beginning of next year. So quarter one of 2016, we expect to see sanctions being lifted, providing what I said happens, of course. Okay, and when that happens, that will be a game changer for the country, okay? What's the opportunity uh, in Iran for oil and gas players? Opportunity is enormous. Um, and Iran has 157 billion barrels of oil reserves. And uh, in 2014 and 2015, during the oil show, Iranians offered a number of these fields, a number of upstream fields for, oil, for international oil and gas companies and investors to come and invest into. If we just look at those fields, which totals 51 onshore and offshore, Iranians are offering 70% of that 157 billion barrels of oil reserves untapped. So it's an enormous opportunity for oil and gas companies to tap into low-cost production and today in the world, it's uh, unique. And the fields you are referring to, what stage of development are they at? Well, some of these fields are uh, uh, late appraisal. Some of them are uh, already producing. But I'd say majority of them are basically in need of um, further uh, sort of infill drilling or additional uh, development work to ramp up production. So very few greenfield projects, mostly development type projects. Okay, so um, what about new contracts? When can we expect the first uh, bidding yes. round to, to start once sanctions uh, are, are lifted? That's right. The, the date has been, uh, the date has moved a couple of times. But there will be a conference in Tehran on the 28th of November uh, where Iran will officially unveil its new contracts called Iranian Petroleum Contracts. And these contracts um, are, uh, are addressing some of the issues that the former Iranian contracts had, the buyback contracts, uh, as it's known in the industry. Um, these contracts will, uh, with these contracts, they will also be announcing the new projects. Uh, some of the 51, if not all of them, will be available for international investors. Okay. Um, so, are you seeing a renewed interest from the foreign oil and gas companies in Iran? Hugely, absolutely. I mean, we have. Um, you know, we, we are growing significantly, I can tell you that, uh, because there's a lot of oil and gas companies and investors who, who want to know what's happening. They want to understand the opportunity and they have been outside the market for something like 10 years. Um, so um, there is going to be a lot of interest. Uh, it's just about finding the right way in. 
that, that you know, going to make a difference between a winner and a loser. So how can you help them then? Oh, absolutely. That's exactly what we do. <laughs> <laughs> so we basically are help, basically are helping these oil and gas companies to find their niche. Because, you see, Iran doesn't need conventional oil and gas drilling companies. Iran needs companies. They need them, that's for sure. But that's no market entry strategy. They need companies who can come in and make a difference uh, in these fields that they have put forward, where you have to apply EOR, IOR, you have to think, by that I mean enhanced oil recovery, by that I mean you know, starting to think very long term, make 20, 25 year investments, uh, companies that are able to drill heavy oil fields and operate heavy oil fields. So they require a specific type of companies. Uh, and I think we just trying to help oil and gas companies to understand the nature of these opportunities in Iran and then find the best way for them to get in. Now, Maldi, I understand it's the uh, first time you are attending the World Oil and Gas Week. Yes. Your thoughts so far? It's an excellent forum. It's an excellent forum for people to, to talk, to network. And it was very interesting yesterday listening to the speakers. You can actually get a feel for what's going on in the industry and how, how, they can, how people can come together to address those issues because some of the ideas that came out of the speakers, I could see that they were already agreeing on what needs to be done. Uh, so it's good to put them in the same room and hear, because they hear each other talking about the same kind of solutions. Um, so it's a fantastic forum and I look forward to attending again. And uh, tell me about the feedback you get from people when you explain your work in Iran and what you're trying to do. Uh, feedback often is very positive. Uh, they can't believe uh, <laughs> you know, we've done what we've done. Um, I think feedback so far we've got is that um, they're really finding it, they really, there is lack of information and knowledge and they find what we provide pretty useful and helpful in addressing that challenge because without good information and knowledge um, they don't, they're not able to find their feed and uh, be able to implement a good en entry strategy. So I think that's where they find our input useful, valuable. Okay, Marty, thank you very much for your time today. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Marty Kazanzadeh, the Chief Executive Officer of AFRAS Advisors.